Our reading today comes from, the, from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks that belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the wilderness where your ancestors tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I had done. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. So I, decided, so I declared an oath in my anger. They shall never enter my rest. These are the scriptures revealing the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please, be seated. <clears throat> well, this morning, as I mentioned earlier, we're kind of on the downhill stretch to a, another Thanksgiving day. And Abraham Lincoln, in his Thanksgiving proclamation of 1863, he said this. The year that is drawing towards its close has been filled with blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. Through these bounties which are so consistently enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they have come, others have been added, which are of so extraordinary a nature they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart which is habitually insensible to the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. <clears throat> See, in Lincoln's day and right up to today, people become so puffed up and prideful in their own abilities that they need to be reminded to be thankful to God. Many even forget to even pray for mercy. We seem to forget that everything comes from God. Everything. I mean, the psalmist, he said it long before the time of Lincoln. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me, though they had seen what I did. Now, the psalmist, <clears throat> he's referring to a time when the people were complaining. Imagine that, the children of Israel complaining. Where the people were complaining in Exodus 17 about Moses leading them into the desert to die of thirst. In fact, the words Meribah and Massa, they literally can be translated as quarreling and testing. You see, Lincoln and the psalmist speak of the basic flaw of mankind that starts with not being satisfied with what we have. We also have this tendency to develop an attitude of, hey, I did it, I deserve it, instead of, I'm thankful for it. The psalmist gives us an understanding that Thanksgiving is, is actually an attitude. An attitude that we are to cultivate in our hearts if we're not to repeat the mistakes of the past. Having the right heart and having the right heart attitude also speaks on how we move into each and every new day. How we see things each and every new day. So let's take a look around, shall we? Let's look around and I, I, I believe that we need to notice and be thankful when we look. Let's start with looking up. <clears throat> looking up 
is to notice the power in the gifts of God. We need to get into the habit of thanking God. Not just one day a year that the country sets aside for the purpose. No, we need to live not as thanksgiving, but as thanks living. There's a woman named Harriet. She was quite a devout atheist. And she had a good friend who was a good Christian lady. And one morning, she and this Christian lady friend stepped out into the glories of a beautiful, beautiful fall morning. And Harriet, she, she saw the brilliant sun peeking through the haze and the, the frost on the meadow. She could see all the trees in the colorful splendor and the leaves just starting to fall down. She was completely filled and in awe at the beauty. And she said, I'm just so thankful. I'm so grateful. And a believing friend asked her, grateful to whom, my dear? Grateful to whom? We should develop a habit of thanking God. He created us for his glory, and we should give him the glory. That means, now hear me on this, that, that, that good parking spot that you got, or that deer that you barely missed, or anything else that we might call luck, that ain't luck. That's God's provision for you. That means that we should actually, actually share with someone when something good happens and give God the credit and tell people about it. <clears throat> well, I see you're kind of falling asleep on me this morning, so I'm going to share with you this quick little story about a man who was lost in desert for about five days. And he comes to the home of this preacher, and he drags himself up on the porch, and he knocks on the door, and he collapses at the doorstep. Preacher opens the door and he sees this poor man laying there. And what does he do? He picks him up, carries him in the house, and he starts nursing this poor fellow back to health. Well, after a few days, this, this man starts to feel much better. And the man asks the preacher for directions to the nearest town. And the preacher, he tells him the directions. And he even offers to lend this man his horse to get him into town safely. Now, the preacher says, however, there's something a little special about this horse. He was trained a little differently than most. You have to say, thank God to make him go. And amen to make him stop. I'm anxious to get to town, the man says, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Just thanks for the horse. He gets on the horse. And he says, thank God, and the horse starts walking. And he's off the to town. And he's thinking, hey, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. A little bit later, he shouts a little bit louder, thank God, thank God. And all of a sudden, this horse is trotting. Oh, this is good. I'll get to town a little bit quicker. And finally, feeling really brave, the man says, thank God, thank God, thank God. This horse is at a full run. And the man didn't realize that he actually took a wrong turn. And all of a sudden, he, at this full run, he realizes he's heading right for a cliff. And, and he yells, whoa! And the horse doesn't do a thing. And he, he's starting to panic. He, he, he doesn't know what to do because this, this cliff is coming up real quick. He says, whoa, stop, hold on, please. Horse won't stop. And finally, he remembers, amen! And the horse squats down and he slides to a stop about two inches from going over that cliff. Stop, the horse stopped so fast, almost threw poor fellow right off the top, right off the saddle and over the horse's neck. And this poor fellow, he's just sitting in the saddle, leaning backwards, his heart's just thumping and thumping. 
Sweat is on his face. He wipes it off. Gasping for air with relief, he says, Thank God. <gasps> <laughs> Brothers and sisters, being thankful to God is understanding his promises that our God actually knows you exist. You ever think about that during the day? God knows you exist. Yes, God knows you exist and he hears your prayers. He sent his son to remove the barrier of sin that separated us from him. So looking up, we should notice the presence of God. Looking up, we should notice the plans of God. Looking up, we should notice the protection of God. Now, how about looking around ourselves? My life is pretty good. I'm comfortable. Perhaps I could even dare say I'm content. But contentment can easily be lost depending on how you look at things. People say, I rarely need anything. And then all of a sudden the advertisement starts, doesn't it? You start getting those catalogs in the mail. Some may say, well, you know, my old truck, my old car, it's good enough for now. Until they see some really nice new car or truck out there. I'm satisfied with my clothes, can disappear with a stroll through the mall. How about I love our home? Until I think about what I'd like to be living in a mansion, or even better for me, a cabin down by the lake somewhere. People are satisfied with every area in their lives until they start comparing it with someone else's life. Then we get to satisfy with the blessings we already have. We feel like we have enough of everything until we feel until we see someone who has someone who has more. <clears throat> I'm going to share with you the secret to a happy life. A happy life is not to get what you want, but to live with what you got. Many spend, our, spend their lives concentrating on what they don't have instead of thinking, thinking about and thanking God for what they do have. When we, wake, when we wake up and we live like that, when we're constantly looking at what we don't have, and we finally wake up, our life is over, and we've missed the beauty of the present. Because we're always looking for more. We want something more. But God provides. Verse 7 says, For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. It seems like we are so short-sighted that we don't know what we got until it's gone. This past summer was a reminder of that, wasn't it? What is he talking about, Pastor? Remember when the power went off for a few days? Yeah! Everybody got so used to just flipping a switch and the lights would come on. Putting stuff in the refrigerator or the freezer and it stayed fresh for a long, long time. And all of a sudden, we lost all of our power for a few days. All of a sudden, the alarm clock wasn't going to go off on time. It stayed out. For some people, it stayed out long enough where they actually lost the food in their freezer and the refrigerator. How quickly we miss the things we don't have instead of being thankful for what we do have. I mean, what if our phone or mail service, our mail delivery suddenly stopped? You'd be missing that real quick too, wouldn't you? What about if a good friend dies and suddenly we discover how much they mean to us? What if our water becomes so polluted that we can't drink it anymore? It would certainly make you appreciate clean water again, wouldn't it? But too often people have an attitude of, all right, God, what have you done for me lately? You know, we're so much like that little boy who was given an orange by a Nice old man, and the boy's mother asked, Well, what do you say to the nice man, dear? 
the little boy thought and handed the orange back and he said, peel it. Do you know in regions of Mexico, there are actually areas found side by side where they have hot springs and cold springs running together. Do you know that? And it's a natural phenomenon, and because it's a natural phenomenon, the women often bring the laundry there. They wash their, the, the, they wash their clothes in the hot water and they rinse it in the cold. It's really convenient. And the tourist watching the procedure commented to his, to his guide and he said, Wow, they must think God is awful generous to freely supply such ample, clean, hot and cold water. And the guy replied, No, there's usually much grumbling because God doesn't supply the soap. Brothers and sisters, look at the things around us. Look at the things around us. Notice the scenery around us. We just had the most beautiful fall, didn't we? The crispness of the, the, crispness of the air. And during those colors and, and the way the air felt, I'm reminded to be thankful. Yes, I know that the leaves fall off and the color goes away. But that's no reason not to give thanks, is it? Looking around me, I'm grateful. And I, I, I'm thankful for the generous provisions of our God. Looking around me, I am thankful for the scenery which changes every season to something new and amazing. <clears throat> yeah, frost can be cold, but it can be pretty too, can't it? Looking around me, I'm, I'm thankful for the people that God has placed around me, including all of you. So how about looking inwards to ourselves? Because in a sense, thanks, Thanksgiving is an expression of modesty. To offer thanks is to confess dependence, to acknowledge that others have the power to benefit you. To admit that your life is better because of their efforts. See, the yearly celebration of Thanksgiving should only be the highlight of thanks living. The art of thanks living is, a, is gratitude in action. Demonstrating your gratitude. It's thanking God for the gift of life by living it triumphantly. Brothers and sisters, if it reaches your hand, let it reach your heart too. It's thanking God for your talents and abilities by accepting them as obligations to be invested in the common good of all. It's thanking God for all the men and the women who have, that have come into your life and have done for you and is showing you their, great, their thankfulness and their gratitude. And you can show your thankfulness by doing the same for others. It's thanking God for happiness by striving to make others happy. It's thanking God for beauty by helping to make the world a little bit more beautiful. A sincere heart will recognize the privilege of serving God and others. Folks, we take so much for granted. We don't say thank you to God or others near enough. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he had made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture. A flock under his care. All glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.